Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechakodash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akim, across the four ones of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the water? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? Who maketh his angels, spirits, his ministers a flame of fire? Shalom. I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. All right. I know I said that before, but hey, man, we could never go too far in giving praise, honor, and glory to our Father. And his beloved son. Okay. And as you see in this picture in the background, one of the brothers posted this on his page, and and, and, and a plethora of brothers is checking it out, man. But this is a chariot, man. Up close, up personal. Okay. You find it very ironic that right around the time you had Vocab Malone trying to mock us going into the chariots, which we understand to be the UFOs. And there's certain individuals that's making statements saying the Lord's chariots have nothing to do with UFOs. People said the Lord doesn't need any ship or anything for his angels to fly in. And he's right. The Lord could do anything by himself. All right. And the angels can fly if they want to. But it doesn't change the fact that they have vehicles too. All right. And this here is a mere examples. A mere example. Okay. Now certain people can try to say this is CGI. All right. Certain people can try to make up a bunch of other excuses. But this right here, what you bear witness to is a chariot of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Close and personal, a ship. OK, that's why I wanted to read this scripture here in Psalms 104. This is an example of the chariot. OK, the prophet Elijah, when he got taken up, he got taken up in one of these. OK, Enoch got taken up in one of these. These were around. Since the beginning of time in creation. Okay. Just as you've seen what was it doing. It was hovering. It wasn't moving. Every time you see a chariot. Whether it's an orb of light in the sky. Or whether it's up and personal like this. They always seem to hover. They don't literally need any type of wings to catch the air and move. Alright. You see that. You see that craft hovering in thin air. Alright. And when this world was made. When it was created. You had the powers which were in the heavens, all right, that were in these. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull up this scripture here in Genesis. All right. And this goes into the creation. It says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Most High moved upon the face of the waters. All right. Now, when you go into this word waters right here, this is alluding to the heavens. OK, when you go into the word heavens in the Hebrew, the word is Shemayim, which means the waters. OK, because remember, this is when the earth was out, was without form and void. OK, and when it says the spirit of God moved, it isn't literally talking about the most high. He was on his throne. OK, but he had his his angels. All right. Starting with Yahweh creating everything. All right. And they was in these crafts when they did it. Now, the reason why I wanted to pull up this verse here, because when you go into the word moved there. The word moved here in the Hebrew is Rahab, right? Rahab. OK. And when you go into that word Rahab, OK, or Rahab, it says to hover. OK, so. The spirit of the Most High, or, the, or really the Allah when they created, they were hovering because, again, the earth was without form and void. It wasn't any land. It wasn't any water that was upon the earth. It was just, it was just uh, pretty much, it was being formed. Okay? So they hovered, man, and they were hovering in these. Okay? These were existed since the beginning. Okay? These were around since the beginning. And, again, you have that word, rakap. OK, now what I want to do here on the blue letter is I want to type in chariot. OK, and I'm going to see if I know there's um, 
a few different examples, but I'm going to pull up the example here. Let's see here. This is in 2 Kings chapter 2, and this is when Elijah was beamed up. Okay, this is when Elijah was taken. So this is 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind. Earlier I read in Psalms 104 that the Lord maketh this cloud his chariots. All right, because those ships, they use the clouds as a cloaking device, man. And when the elect get beamed up, when the elect get delivered into the heavens, that's what's going to be taken. And it was a spirit that light came out from the bottom because that's that tractor beam. Okay, it's going to be just like that when the elect get taken up into those chariots. Okay, this is beautiful. This got me excited, man. Mm -hmm. All right, and the spirit, the spirit is always on point. The spirit is always on point. Right when you had scoffers talking about the chariots hard, saying we sound crazy, the spirit has this take, take, take place, man. Okay, and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. So it was already understood that Elijah was going to be taken up in heaven. Okay. And Elijah said unto Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. All right. And Elisha was, um, was a faithful servant unto uh, Elijah. All right. He was a faithful steward under Elijah. Okay. Verse 3 says, and the sons of the prophets, which is who we spiritually are today. The sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee. And the Lord had sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets, which who we are, that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, hear. For the Lord hath sent me to Jordan and said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood the view afar off, and they too stood by Jordan. OK, so it's ironic you had 50 of the sons of the prophets standing on the outside of Jordan, bearing witness to the event that was going to take place with Elijah and Elisha. And when you go into that number five, that number five represents a gathering. OK, it represents a hand or a gathering. OK, and ultimately that's what we're doing today. So that gathering of prophets was getting ready to bear witness to the glory of the heavenly father beaming up his servant. OK. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elisha said unto him, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, I shall be so, Salakia. It shall be so unto you, but if not, it shall be so. And Elisha asked for a lot right there because he was already given a heavy portion. So re to receive a double portion of Elijah's spirit was a very heavy portion to have. OK. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, which really just goes into power. A lot of people will have you thinking that it was actually a sleigh that came down and got him. No, man. All this just represents the power. OK. And horses of fire, really, because when you look at the chariots in the sky, at certain times it looks like it's a fire in the sky. All right. And when they get closer, you see the actual machine. But when it's high in the sky, it looks like a, an orb of fire. Sometimes they're white. Sometimes they're orange. I've seen some orange gliding across the sky with a tail. Sometimes they're green, different colors. But right here, he said a chariot of fire. OK. And the horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. All right. So Elijah was taken up by that tractor beam, man. All right. Now, when you go into this word chariot right here. What is that word? Rakab. OK. Just like a variation of it that was read earlier in Genesis where it said the spirit of the most high moved 
on the waters. When you go into that word moved, which means hovered, it's rakop. Okay, so you see the root within that. Okay, and it hovered. It said a chariot. Okay, it says chariots, and then it says chariot singular. Okay, so I just wanted to go into that point right there, going into that, and what you see here is a chariot hovering, man. What you're bearing witness to right now is the spirit of the Most High moving. All right, and this is just one example, man. There's numerous examples, man. These chariots are real, and when Yahweh comes back alongside with his holy host, it's going to be thousands on top of thousands of them. Okay, and Yahweh Shai is going to come with a chariot the size of a mountain. All right, that's what you read in Second Ezra, the 13th chapter. And that right there is a sign that this place is finished. This place is through. One of the brothers posted, I forgot who it was, it was a while ago, but he posted a video saying, be prepared to see actual ships and not orbs of light. And brothers, what you're bearing witness to right now is an actual ship, man. Call Hala Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakakwadash. Brothers, we go in the hell home. Call Hala Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rakakwadash. All right. Double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations to you, elect Akim, across the four winds of this earth, pushing this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom.
Ben. 